Hey guys, Tuesday with Tanya. I'm here with Joanne Janini. And we're here at beautiful Felicia's in, North Kings, in uh, East Greenwich. We're here right on Post Road. We're right near North Kingstown. Hi everybody. <laughs> hey guys, drop a comment if you want to say hi, even if you're watching on a replay. And um, yeah, I mean, they have, uh, we have uh, our coffees here. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> we have that, I have the pumpkin. Uh, the flavor is brewed in the bean. So we have like no sugar added, which is great. So I have that. And what was yours again? Green brulee. Oh, get out. Creme brulee? Green brulee. Is it coffee or is it a... It's a decaf cream brulee with steamed oat milk. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be healthy. <laughs> yeah, no, sounds, sounds yummy. Uh, they have basically lots of um, pastries, cupcakes, muffins, desserts. There's those overnight oats, which seem like they're becoming like a new thing. Um, cookies, they have a lot here, and it is baked in house. So it's baked here, it's homemade, it's delicious. And they have uh, different coffee flavors, they have a story, they put up this story on Facebook every day. So it's always going to be a special thing that day. Check out Facebook, Felicia's Coffee, again, right on Post Road in East Greenwich. Um, so yeah, what was your favorite um, Your favorite oh, one here? I, I, I think the pumpkin white chocolate chip muffins are the best. Yeah. And I, I love the uh, caramel macchiatos. They're so good. Yeah. You can't have all that sugar every day, but you can have it once in a while. So um, wait, this is the go-to spot in East Greenwich. There's a lot of coffee shops around, but this one is really uh, popping and Come in here, plug in your Wi-Fi, and, you know, look at your, read your papers, and they have a nice new stand. So, we're here today. I'm glad to be here, Tanya, inviting me. We're having fun. Good. You're welcome. You're welcome. Guys, drop a comment. Let us know if you can hear us, because they are very busy. I gotta say, it's definitely a happening place, even on a Tuesday. Tuesday daytime, this is before lunch. I mean, I got here early too, like before 11. It was it was very, very, very busy. Hey, Robert, by the way. Hi, Rob. Uh, Robert, call me if you want an interview. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Robert, if you're still tuned in or whoever's tuned in, if you want to drop a comment saying, yes, I can hear you, or no, I can't, <laughs> if you don't mind. But they do also have um, high in fiber options. They have gluten-free options. I'm low fat. About, yeah, low fat options. And it's baked in-house, homemade. Um, coffee, the flavor is brewed in the bean. And it's posted to their story, so don't forget, they have merchandise, they have great uh, mugs, they have great uh, new sweatshirts over there, so yeah. So I, I think it's a place people stopped at probably like two oh, and yeah, like, families. Like, I think I'm going to get myself one of those Felicia travel mugs. They look cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The nice fireplace. Yeah, nice fireplace. No, we didn't get that seat, but that's okay. <laughs> very homey, very homey. Yeah, very nice. And I think this place too is one of those places like you stop at on your way to the beach or on your way back. Right. Like you stop on, like to and from to the beach or to anywhere in Narragansett, Newport, whatever. You know, I'm just and saying. you get a gargantuous <laughs> iced coffee. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> on your way to the beach. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for letting us know. Thank you. All right, cool. So, uh, so yes. So, 16 years as a state rep. That's a long time. Yeah, long time. That's a long time. As I definitely got to tell us about that state rep now, because I follow but don't follow politics. As my viewers kind of know, I'm kind of in the middle. Like I, I follow them, but not 100. percent So, when you're a state rep, you cover a certain area. Yeah. When How does it work? When you're a state rep, I was a state representative. I covered Mount Pleasant, Elmhurst Valley section of Providence for 16 years. So you serve about, at the time, uh, you serve at least 15,000 constituents. So it's really, um, it's really a, a large district. And um, it's as opposed to being a councilor, because there's only 75 reps, representatives, state representatives throughout the whole state. And um, I was elected in 1994. Um, I took uh, Patrick Kennedy's seat. He ran for Congress, and I ran for his seat. I was his uh, former state committee woman. So when I ran for his seat uh, in 1994, I was sworn in in January. I ran in the November. And um, 
I enjoyed it. I spent 16 years in the house, at the state house, and it was quite an adventure. Passed a lot of legislation. Met a, met a lot of people. Best coffee in the state. All right, see, we got a customer here. Best coffee. Everyone says it's the best coffee in the state. And we're trying, we're trying. Is this, is this, is this, oh, do you have a show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to do today is we're trying to visit local businesses. And we're doing an interview, but Tanya visits local businesses and gives them a plug. And uh, she asked me where I'd like to meet, and I said I'd like to meet at Felicia's because it, they just bought it a few years ago from the other owner, and. It's it's such a good place, and I think people would like to know about it. And um, getting back to being a state rep, um, I'm also a freelance writer. At the time. I write. I've written for many publications. I wrote for uh, the local five. I wrote for the editorial page of the Providence Journal, WPRO, Rhode Island Levelant. Um, but, uh, uh, Ocean State Current, which I also still write for now, uh, previously um, wrote and was uh, managing editor of The Wave. And um, now, you know, I'm freelancing and exploring my options and looking into doing podcasts, maybe some with time, yeah? We're looking to work together. And we want to be on the radio. <laughs> we do. We'd love to be on the radio. We'd love to be like, um, hold up. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Kat, and <laughs> Kathy Lee, you know, I say Kathy Lee because I think Kathy Lee was good. Yeah. And I enjoy, I enjoyed her, you know. Yeah, so she yeah, was yeah. good. Yeah. Only we have coffee today, not wine. I know. I know. Next time we're going to have some wine. <laughs> I know. That's what I should be having. You know, it'll make me relax. I just can't acquire a taste to it. My father and my grandfather. So, guys, I hope you can hear us still. Let us know you can hear both of us. If you don't mind dropping a comment or drop a comment to say hi. So, we're going to move into um, also our raffle as well. Yeah, we'll still talk more with uh, Joanne here, Joanne Janini. Um, yeah, so I, so say, I, yeah, I still, sorry. even though I'm not uh, a state rep, I still get involved. A lot of my writings are to do with issues that affect the neighborhood and affect the most vulnerable. When I was a state representative, I did issues that uh, for children, child abuse, uh, human trafficking, uh, being in human trafficking and things like that. And basically, um, I wrote an editorial this week about uh, saving Mount Pleasant High School. Many of you may not know that it's, um, they're thinking the Rhode Island Department of Education is thinking of demolishing the school and building a new one, or perhaps uh, partial de demolishing it and restoring some of it, which many of us in the neighborhood of Mount Pleasant would like to see. That is my home, and that's been for over 40 years. But uh, we're thinking that a lot of people uh, don't know about this and would like to have a say. So if you feel strongly that you want the school saved in some capacity, and another key point is if they tear it down, we won't have the Conley Stadium, we certainly won't have the beautiful auditorium that the neighbors have used for years for neighborhood meetings and different recitals and different neighborhood events. We understand it needs to be restored, but we'd like to see the historic preservation of it, you know, saved. So contact the Rhode Island Department of Education and the Mayor's Office in Providence if you'd like to see it saved. Thank you. Yeah. So, hey guys, hey Joanne, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, so Mount Pleasant in general. So I, I like everything you said, it is a historic building. You said the auditorium is used for different purposes. And then you mentioned about, did you mention a baseball field there? Is that what well, there's a football field there. Conley Stadium is a lot of different people that a lot of, played a lot of games there, you know. And I remember growing up and I went to school there. We had many football games. Now, I don't know if they would be salvaging some of the stadium or keeping it, but there's a lot of 
history and memories there for those of us who went to Mount Pleasant and those of us who graduated. And the school is 80 something years old. And 80 something? 85. Oh, wow. So there are many graduates and there are many people out there who feel they'd like to see it restored in some capacity, not the whole thing demolished. And we're hoping to see people respond. The Providence Preservation Society is against tearing down Mount Pleasant High School. Uh, thank you. And hi, Tom. Uh, Tom is tuning in. Hi, Tom. He said hi to you, by the way. Hi, Tommy. He said to say hi. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Joanne Johnson is saying she wants to get in touch with you regarding something to do with uh, ET Human Trafficking. It's a nonprofit. Yeah. She's asking how she can get in touch with you. You can call me or get in touch with me. Um, my Okay, I'll give you my email, pt3270 at yahoo.com. Um, I've done a lot of work on, a lot of bills on human trafficking, um, sex trafficking, uh, indoor prostitution, and um, I did the law that would stop teenagers under 18 from working in strip joints. So we saw, we found that in Rhode Island, we were in Haiti for people to come here and take teenage girls, runaway girls, and set them up in the strip clubs to do dancing and solicit sex. Uh, basically, uh, we made the laws to protect us so that we could protect the young girls, young women and young children. He's been 13, 14 years old, they're still children. I don't care the way they say, you know. Well, it's still like minors, definitely still under age. So yeah, wow, so that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing in Rhode Island, but are you talking years ago or currently? It, it was going on. We had 30 massage parlors in this state. 30 massage parlors? Until the bill passed in 2009. And a lot of them, yeah, massage parlors, illegal. They were really rotten. They were doing more than massaging. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing I, I worked a lot on, um, Thank you, Joanne. A lot of things that I worked a lot on were taxes. Um, I put in the first legislation in 1998 to eliminate uh, the car tax, which after many, many years, uh, they finally picked up the ball. They, they redid it in 98, and they stopped it in 2010. They finally picked up the ball uh, two years ago, and are finally eliminating the car tax. And I worked on a lot of issues regarding schools, children's safety, uh, allergies, being safe in schools, uh, different things like that, a lot of uh, sexual abuse bills. I've had a long career, 16 years there. But now I devote my time to writing, and I enjoy writing, and I still write, I still send in editorials and write for different newspapers. So I'm happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, sounds great. I know you're a great writer and, and great editor and all that stuff. And like you said, you're connecting it to the community. But this time you've even, you've even done things that were, you know, about your Italian heritage and oh, yeah. you know, a lot of us found interesting too. Well, it, it's you know? funny so, yeah, it was to nice. say that. It was nice. I have written about the statue that, that's oh, yeah. part of our Italian heritage. And today, yeah. I heard on the news that Mayor Palacina is having it erected in in uh, Johnson's Memorial yeah. Park, so uh, which is timely with Columbus Day coming next right, week. Right. And uh, I want to send shout out to Jean Bellasetti, who's going to be the uh, honorary uh, Grand Marshal of the Columbus Day Parade, which uh, I think that's great that they have the parade of Ben Hill. Um, it, it'll be a great weekend there. Festivities, and it will be, you know, October 6th. It'll be October 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's funny you brought that up, not not to go off topic. Yeah, but you know, the Columbus statue is important. I think they're going to have 
cameras on it, which is really sad it has to come to that point that the statue needs security nowadays. Kind of crazy. But thank you, Joanne. Yes, and Joanne's the same thank you. Um, so, Joanne, in, in case if you wanted to call, you can call my number. It's on the page. You can definitely email um, Joanne right here. Can people reach you on Facebook too or no? Yeah, you can reach me on Facebook. As a, again, just, a, just some backup avenues there. We have the Columbus statue. It's just sad it would even need security. Yeah, I mean, security is ridiculous. Well, a funny quick story about Gene Valicente, right? I don't know him. He's just an acquaintance. But before I officially met him in person, which was at an event, by the way, back in like 2021, right? I met him in person at an event. But before that, do you know he actually called my phone, right? I don't forget this. Maybe because it's a public number, whatever. And I'm like, all of a sudden I see on the caller ID, it comes up Gene Valicente. I don't have him saved in my phone because he wasn't someone, you know, He's like, who's, who's, he's like, oh, hi, Tanya. I'm like, oh, hi, how are you? Or, you know, or just someone I had been, like, I had been on his radio show a couple times, but never met him in person and never had his personal cell number. He's calling me. It was crazy. Like, like oh, hi, good. How are you? This and that. Oh, do you know who's running, like, the, the, the parade on Central Hill, this and that? Do you know if I'm going to be in a car or if I'm going to have to walk? Like, the guy thought I was important enough to know the answer to that. It's like, so I took it as, like, a compliment. He wants to know. If I know who's running the Columbus Day Parade, I'm like, actually, I don't. But I gave him a couple of people that may have had an answer for him, like that Rick Simone guy. Rick and, Simone from the yeah, so I gave Beverly him, Hill Commerce mm -hmm. Association would so, be the one to call. Yeah, so I so I did that. And I, it was just funny, just like, I'm like, wow, this guy thinks I'm like that important. He's calling me up. <laughs> but I think it was because at the time I had worked on the newspaper, you know. So I think that he thought, like, oh, the newspaper, oh, Federal Hill, the newspaper. Like, the like, Ryan Way wasn't just a Federal Hill paper, the name. Maybe back in the day, it was the Federal Hill Gazette or whatever. So maybe that's why he made the connection. And so I should have said to him, yeah, sorry, Gene, I don't know who's running the thing. Like, but do I know who runs Federal Hill? Like, I know who runs Federal Hill, but I don't think that's what you're, you're referring to. And that became the joke. <laughs> like, the mom joke, you know. It was just a joke. But, um, yeah, so anyways. But that was just weird. But, yeah, we like Gene Bell Sensi. Actually, today he had on um, Jay Leno. Yeah, I heard Jay yeah. Leno's getting the Hall yeah. of Italian Hall of Fame Award on Wednesday yeah. night at PPAC at yeah. 7.30. So it's crazy. there's still tickets available yeah. if oh, people yeah. want to go. And Gene oh, yeah. has a home in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, oh, Jay Leno? Jay Leno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Leno has a home in Newport, Rhode Island, yeah. So it's quite interesting that yeah. we Rhode Islanders attract I know, we have a lot know, of people, and there's a lot of, you know, yeah, we have Taylor Swift yeah, that lives that. there. I just gonna say her name. Yeah, yeah. I know. She's all over the news today because she's going out with one of the Kansas City Chiefs Is that players. Legit? Yeah, Is that legit I guess it's legit. Oh, imagine. Good for her. Yeah, good that's for awesome. Him. So I, I don't really follow her, but I know some people that do. She invited. Um, I think it must have been a special invite only. Some of her fans into her personal living room in her home. I thought that was so nice. Well, Imagine I doing never that. heard of that. Yeah, I, and then I confirmed it with one of her like fans. Like she's, she may have done that, and I don't know. Quote me. She has more than one home. She may have done it in each home and invited like 89 people at the event because the number 89 has significance. I don't know if it's one of her albums. I don't know if it's the year she's born. It might be something. It yeah. was crazy. But imagine, like, what famous person would invite their fans, well, limited number of fans, but into their home. I thought that was like, That's wow. That's a great thing. I was like, can you imagine? I was talking about just, I always look at things like, take advantage of the experience. Even though I don't follow her, I don't hate her, I don't really know her, but if I could get a ticket to that kind of event, like, I look at life as, like, those moments that you just, you know what I'm saying? That you, you enjoy those moments. A got a weird of, and unique. Got you know. a lot of Swifties out there. That's yeah, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, you knew that. I do. <laughs> see, I she, do. she, see, Taylor Swift's not our generation, but but we we know the significance behind her, really. I mean, yeah. God. No, you do though. But that, that's wonderful. Ta so. One talented young lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. And um, 
So yeah, getting back to the car tax, is it true that Rhode Island was one of the few states that actually had a car tax? Yeah, it is true. Is that true? true. It's true. What's wrong with the state sometimes? I mean, well, I don't mean know, it mean, but I come mean, on, you know. I mean, Providence was the highest, it was $70 uh, up to per thousand. With, it, it wasn't even a uniform tax. Providence was $70 per thousand, where New Shoreham was $9.20. So the only thing you could do to make the fair system was to eliminate them. Yeah, see? Right on. That's, that's crazy. And then you had mentioned um, about some of the laws. Um, so basically, you helped get some of that into effect with different laws. I did a lot. I did a lot of laws for the most vulnerable people. I did insurance coverage for people with uh, artificial legs and limbs, prothesis coverage that they would have uh, their choice, quality of choice to where they wanted to go, freedom of choice, where they wanted to have their prothesis made, and it would be covered by insurance. I did laws for cancer testing for women, CA-125 for women cancer. Um, I did cancer control task forces based on what I worked with Mayor Menino in Boston, and we set up a, a, a here a, a legislation to create cancer control task forces where in each city and town they would have like a mobile van go around and screen women who couldn't afford health insurance for breast cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was very happy uh, doing that work. It's fulfilling. And yes, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. It feels good to do something for people who need it. Like rewarding. Like, do you feel, it sounds like it was very, like, it's rewarding. It's rewarding. Yeah, it's nice. rewarding. Nice. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I think um, another way to, to stay involved is through my writing to inform people of what's going on and what they need to know. Look at that woman that came in, that's about topic. The view is now with Flexible on here. This is not Channel 12. Oh, let me use the ladies. Do you see the shoes she has on? It looks like a sporty. Do you see this? I don't see it. And I don't know what kind of shoes. I'll tell you. It though. was like being on like a platform. I've but, never but seen a, a coffee shop this crowded. Wow. You? But, no, I know. I know. Very crowded. I didn't mean to get sidetracked, but her shoes were like a sneaker or a athletic shoe with like these like half circles underneath them. Like she's on a spring. Do you run in those? Do you do tricks in those? I don't know. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, she's coming this way again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Right there, right there, right there. You see her? Yep. This lady right here. Mm, that's cool. That's cool. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think that was a roll of like roll of blades. Ah, that's different. My God, we have everything in 2023. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> I couldn't make it here. Are those rollerblades underneath? No, they're jump, jump shoes. Yeah, like jump Oh. Oh. You look good. Are you, you look, Felicia? You in shape. Felicia, you remember me? Oh, yeah, next to Anthony. Joanne, yeah. yeah. What are you doing in here? Is she the former homestead. Is she the former owner? The former owner. Come and say hi on our Yeah, you want to say hi? <coughs> no, she looks good. She looks in shape. Felicia's a former owner here. If you want to see yourself later on those Facebook pages, those Facebook pages. Show the viewers your Say shoes. hi. Say hi. How are you doing? I want to see your shoes. It's like, like to be six foot one. I know. I know. Just like a now side. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? That is cool. Um, My God, that's awesome. It, it, it burns a lot more energy, and yeah. uh, it's kind of fun, and it's, I don't ache. Yeah. After it has, you know, has some benefits and wow. that's cool though. It's cool. It's what cool. Is, what did you say? This is what? Oh, it's a podcast. So if you want to watch yourself later, it's on those two Facebook pages. No, it's public. It's public. You look good. You look good. You look good. I miss you, Felicia. You look good. I still God. come in quite a bit, but the one only different thing I like to do in the morning is have my coffee and sit in my window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I woke up a nervous wreck for 43 years, so... Oh, <laughs> What's that many years? Shut up. Felicia, she looks young. The viewers that don't know Felicia started this um, up the street, on uh, Main Street, and grew it into a phenomenal business. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, I didn't realize this. And I've been coming here for years. I she remembered me, too. Oh, yeah. And, and, and one time we were out on a boat, and I couldn't walk across the thing, the box, and she held me up. She's in such good shape. She helped me. I, I was 
Oh, yeah. I don't forget. I don't forget. The only thing I should have done was uh, brought some flip flops or something to change what I got. You know, you look, you look very good. Nice to see you. I'm impressed. Nice impressed. to see you, honey. Right, take care. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like surprise. I never, I never met her. I never met her. I, I know everybody. So funny. No, I know. <laughs> Joanne knows everybody. I try. Like, no, you do. No, you do. I you do know a lot of people. You do. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yes, I haven't changed. I know. Sometimes we feel like we've changed. <laughs> I'm trying to be in, in that good of shape. I want to try to tone up a little bit. I know. But, you know, I'm always running around doing like everything she, else. Is the you problem. don't like, the, you're like the, 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 the energy. Tanya's the energizer bunny. If I could get some of what she has, put it in a box and sell it, I'd be in the house. No, there are millions in the house. And I do have a lot of energy, but I do waste it though sometimes on like, you know, this or that or living in the future or doing the mind. The yeah, mind like I'm just like, like, like yeah, it's like it's sometimes it's unfocused and sometimes I'm losing time with my OCD and I'm like, my God, it's like I gotta still do this and this, which is more important than thinking about that, which is not until like, you know, next month. So it's weird. I, I used to acknowledge it. I think I need help with time management. So you feel a lot of us need help with time management, though. Like, yes. In general, I think a lot of humans need People help with time need management. Like, like, think about it. On a busy day, you could bang out so many things. But on a day off, it's like, you know, you just wake up late, or it's you just lounge around. Like, you know, you don't get as much done on a day off as you would on a work day. My opinion. What do you think? Yeah, I, you, you don't. And it's all so when you get up, like... Felicia just said, you get up in the morning, you have your coffee, and you're looking out the window, and you're thinking, what am I going to do today? Most of the time, get up and go to work, hurry up, but after you're, after you're retired and you're not working, or you have a night, different hour job, you have the days free, you want to keep going. You just don't want to sit around and do nothing. No, it's true. Definitely true. So, um, the other thing I was going to say about the Mount Pleasant thing, I feel like as much as there's people like you who want to restore it, don't you agree there's people who think it's an unsafe building? Oh, it is. Is it, is it is. true, though, that there's, I don't well, mean to go you against know, what you're saying, I mean, but the building's old. Are there bricks falling? Is that a true rumor? I don't know there's about the bricks falling. Bricks are falling, that they had to but, rope it but, off? But I mean, let, me, that let me say this. Yeah. They've restored both. They've restored other buildings that were... Okay. Um, you know, similar architecture. I think when no one could think they could restore the whole building because that would cost a fortune, but if they can have partial restoration and keep some of the history there, right, I think it's a good thing. And I think the people of the neighborhood should be heard. And if the people of the neighborhood decide that they want it torn down, then so be it. But let the people have their voice. That's right. all I'm saying. Right. Let the right. people, and there were some people that wanted to have a voice. Yeah. And let them have their voice. Let the people have the voice. Right. right. And you had done a nice job of not just with Mike's Ten House guys, the Ocean State Current. So your article's there about Mount it Pleasant, is, you know. the Ocean State Current. Uh, it's Mike Stenhouse's platform. So I uh, definitely check that out. But you also did a nice job on Gene Valcenti. Was it wasn't it Gene Valcenti you called into? I called in. Yeah, yes, that was awesome. I called in yes. the governor. Oh, you did? I called Governor oh, King. Right. Hi, that's Governor right. McKay. That's right. It's that's me right. again. <laughs> I called him up. That's right. And, oh, my God. Um, I forgot I about that piece. I called him yeah, up. Yeah. And he was real. You know something, though? I mean, he was really um, good that day. He gave, uh, like, a, a whole... Um, he gave a whole presentation on what his plans were for the schools yeah. in Providence, not just Mount Pleasant, but all of them. And it was really good. And, and it's good to get the people to know what you're doing. And it was a good way to get it out. And I, I was happy and thankful that Gene let me do that. Yeah. And I was happy that the government answered the questions. And, yeah. you know, some people want to hide from questions. But I mean, he, he, he faced it head on and he answered it. And, you know, whatever happens, he promised that it would be for the betterment of the students. And, and that's what we all really care about. Right, right. And I like how you said that, too, because that's my theory, which I had said on some other videos regarding the Cranston superintendent of schools. You don't run from questions. 
Like if you're in a leadership, don't you agree, if you're in a leadership position, you should be able to answer questions. Right. And even if you don't have an answer in that moment, you say, you know, call me, I'll get back to you. Or here, here's my assistant's number. You know, he or she will get back to you. Or yeah. I mean, it's just I, I, there's no walking away from questions. When you're like, then you shouldn't be in power. Then if you can't answer it, you shouldn't be in power. When you're in you know? a public office, you have to be prepared for them to stick that microphone in front of you and answer the question. You have to be accountable to the people. You have to be there, and you have to be 24/7. It's not. It's not like, uh, oh, I'm going to take the weekend off. There are no weekends off. So right. that's, that's the right. way it is. That's right. Exactly. So, you know. It's a full-time commitment. Right. So if I'm, like, scared or upset, in quotes, uh, the superintendent of Cranston Schools, I'm like, nobody comes into her. She totally should have had an answer for me. I am not Tim White. She should have had an answer. I think that's just utterly ridiculous. Well, some people It just yeah, was like, it was a really big turn-off, unfortunately. Some people yeah, get, um, get like, you know, she's get nervous or they, they're not prepared. But the difference between her and a politician is a politician that's elected and sworn in has to be available to know the answers to the questions. And, you know, what you see today, a lot of people, a lot of politicians, will say, I'll get back to you later. And that's okay, as long as they get back to you later. If you don't know it, I'll find out. That's fine. But, you know. I, I still feel um, that even as a superintendent, whether it's Cranston, whether it's another district, you don't think they need an answer? You think they can? Well, I mean, I think they do. I well, the people, but, but, yeah, she has to be accountable. When you take a position of authority, you have to be accountable. I mean, the PTA uh, parents. No, oh, yeah, the PTO and all that. Have, PTA, have yeah, to yeah. make you accountable. And even like the superintendents of the, of the city, the schools, and the state, you have to be accountable to the people of, you know, that they serve. Because um, the way the school system is going now, I mean, school's not like when we went to school. It's totally different. I mean, it, 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 you know, there's a lot more uh, violence. There's a lot more trouble. There's a lot more things, gun violence going on on the streets. There's a lot more things that can get kids into trouble. They have to have a right a white hat and, and who teaches them and it starts at home you know yeah. with the parents but you know who leads them and who teaches them yeah. is a very important factor and in a uh, school in, in no child can learn in a school that is not safe or is not healthy or clean you know it, it shouldn't be there's money to spend on all these other projects and to send across the country to different countries. There should be money for our children. Yeah. There should, exactly. And there's nothing against other countries, but we shouldn't be supporting other countries or assisting them when we can use the assistance right here and, in the schools. You know. And on, and on that note, we saw the case last two weeks ago where 98 people in Cranston were really flooded out of their homes, fled their homes, fled their homes with the clothes on their back and lost everything. Well, that happened again in 2013, and I had family members that lived there. So I know, they lost everything, and they never recouped. And the point of the matter is, someone is responsible for the flooding, whether it be that the storm drains aren't cleaned, or, or the apartment building maybe shouldn't have been built in that location. There are, there are things that happen there that this happened in 2013 and now it happened again. It can't happen anymore because it's playing with people's lives and safety and it's just not right. So I hope, I'm hoping to see I, I, I accolades to the mayor of Cranston who stepped forward and helped those people and still trying to help. In fact, he's doing a drive for them at the... Cranston's having something the weekend on Saturday, a festival, and they're going to have where you can bring more new items there for these people that were lost everything in the apartment, the Dean Estate Apartments. 
So, I mean, I think I think people, have, we have to start caring a little bit more about our people right. at home. Right. Exactly. No, no, definitely well said. I want to try to have um, some people on, too. I don't want to mention names, yeah. but, like, for people who have, um, like, one gentleman lost two dogs. Like, that's just, like, heartbreaking. Some, like, he was on Tara Granahan. I'd like to have him on. He's on my list. My list is always growing. It's just uh, <laughs> getting around to people and getting in touch with them and Tanya's always working and whatever. So I don't always get around to it. But um, no, this was great today. I just wanted to uh, move into our raffle and stuff. So um, we're going to do our raffle to Mangiamo. Um, I was going to shake it up. You want me to pick one? Yeah, I was going to shake it up. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'll take it. I was going to say, shake it up. Shake it up. They're all shaking. Shake it up, baby. Okay, okay. Then you can pick one, yeah. Oh, you got it? Give you the honest. Mike Perez. And then I like flip it around. I go. I always like to prove. There's my um, So Mike Perez, uh, give me a call. You won. You won the gift card to uh, Mangiamo in North Providence. Excellent food, excellent desserts. Mangiamo right in North Providence, right on Smith Street. Call me up. You have a week to call. If not, it does get re-raffled off. And that's what happens. It's about 50-50. Sometimes people call me. It's a free raffle though. You just enter your name. There's no cost to enter. So I can't like be chasing people down like you won, you won, you won. But if you don't enter, so, you can't win. So enter. Right, right, right. But then, and also claim your prize. Because if you don't claim your prize, like even that wasn't claimed, you know, back a month or two ago. So now it's up for grabs again. So, um, so guys, claim the prize. My phone number is right on the page. And uh, thank you. Anything you want to wrap up with before? Um, no, I just want to say peace, love to everyone, and um, remember to be kind to each other. Yes, that's right. That's very important. I even think to end on that note. To be kind to each other. Yes, you're right. No one wants to be mean or be arguing all the time. So we always want to be kind. Be and kind. thank you, thank you, uh, yeah. Tanya, for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. We have to do it again, and uh, we'll definitely connect again. And uh, next week, uh, I don't know the exact location, but I do know who I'm going to be with. Uh, I'm going to be on doing like a Halloween type, early Halloween type of edition <laughs> on uh, the 3rd of October, next Tuesday, October 3rd, uh, with Charlotte Duva. She's actually going to be back in Rhode Island. So it's like, wow, I feel like I don't see her in years, and all of a sudden now I'm going to see her two times. So uh, we're doing something with, some, I don't know, with the missing persons case, or kind of a haunted, or try to make it haunted type thing. We might even be in the woods. I don't know for sure. There's some park areas or something. She knows about all the outdoor stuff. I'm more of a city person or suburbs person. So I'm not sure the exact location, but we're going to go on our travels next uh, Tuesday. Hopefully it doesn't rain. So tune in for that. Thanks, guys. And like and share. Thank you. All right.